Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss sensitivity analysis, also known as what if analysis. What if this happened? What if that happened? Now in the prior session we looked at expected value. If you don't know what expected value is, please go back to the prior session and look at expected value. Why? Because sensitivity analysis, it's closely related to expected value. They are connected. Actually, actually, it's an extension of the expected value when it comes to decision making under uncertainty. Just a quick review, and we will do. We'll work an example about the expected value to explain sensitivity analysis. But what is sense? What's expected value? It provides the weighted. It provides the weighted average of all possible outcome based on their probabilities. So the outcome type times the probabilities helping decision makers assess the overall outcome of a decision. And we discussed this in the prior session and we looked at long two, two examples, actually three examples, we work three examples including the explanation. So basically looking at, because we, we live in an uncertain world, we want to take a look all probabilities into account, therefore we'll take the outcome times the probability to figure out what's the expected value. Now we're going to add another layer to this. We're going to add sensitivity analysis test. Because remember, why? what's the main reason why we compute expected value? Because we don't know 100% what's going to happen for sure, deterministically. We know maybe 60% things will be good, 20% things will be bad, and 20% things will be perfect. So this amounts to 100%, but we don't know which is which, so we compute the expected value. Now, in sensitivity analysis, what we are going to do, we're going to now test changes in key input, such as probabilities or outcome, affect the expected value. Now, what we can do, we can change those percentages. What if it's not 60, the best case situation, or if it's 40, 50, so on and so forth? By evaluating different scenarios here, sensi sensitivity analysis will help identify which variable has the greatest impact on the expected value, given decision makers more resources, more information to refine estimate or main manage risk more carefully. So sensitivity analysis will give us more information, but again, it's a form of estimate. It's a form of guessing. But the more guesses you have and you can incorporate them into a, a formula, it, you're, the better off you are. So if you want to summarize it real quick, expected value offer a baseline for decision making. So this is the expected value. Sensitivity analysis would help assess how sensitive that baseline is subject to changes, assumptions, and input. Because when you came up with that 60%, how did you come up with it? Well, GDP will grow 5%. Well, if GDP grew, grew only by 1%, what if we went GDP negative, gross domestic product, so on and so forth. So you will start to make those assumptions and refine your computation. Let's go ahead and dive deeper into sensitivity analysis. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello everyone. Are you struggling with your CMA exam preparation? Do you feel that your review course is moving too fast, too brief, or not covering topics in depth? Well, if that's the case, at Farhat Lectures, we can help you. We build your confidence through in-depth explanation not memorization or reading the slides. What we will do is we provide baby steps approach to break down complex topic so you can truly learn, understand the material. How do we do so? We offer video lectures, we offer practice MCQs, we offer true false questions, we offer exercises, we offer the notes. Understanding the material is the first step in passing the exam. Once you understand the material, you have gained the confidence to pass, and you can pass with Farhat Lectures. What can you do now? Start your free trial. You have a two-day free trial. Take a look at it. Give us a chance. Your risk is zero. You like it, you keep it. You don't like, you cancel. Give us a chance. We can help you pass the CMA exam. So the first thing sensitivity analysis would do is helps management understand the consequences of errors in their initial prediction. So when you assume 60%, things will be real good or good. Well, how about if only 40%
chance things will be good show me what will happen under those circumstances or worse only 20 percent things will be in good in good shape economy is in good shape assuming the economy is the only factor here the economy the industry whatever well since decisions are often based on estimates or forecasts that are them th themselves uncertain sensitivity analysis allows you the decision maker to see what happens if those estimates are wrong if you thought 60 and let's change 60 to 40 and take 20 percent and put it with worst case scenario what would happen to your expected value well you want to see this because you want to take a look at different scenarios because the expected value is estimates now let's change those estimates to see what would happen this is what if this is what we're doing what if don't worry we'll work an example also sensitivity analysis in the real world sometimes it's used for justification for additional resources it helps businesses decide whether it's worth investing more time and resources into obtaining better data or improving their forecast so it's like i don't look if we make those changes this is what will happen well because this might happen I need more resources so if the analysis shows that changes in the assumption lead to significant shift in expected outcome like large fluctuation in profit or cost then it might be worth worthwhile to refine the estimates to improve decision making so simply put if we if we see there's huge changes based on those estimate those sensitivity analysis then we're going to allocate more resources get more data try to improve our forecast now the best way to illustrate this is to do what work an example so we'll work an example starting with the expected value as the baseline then we'll work some what if analysis now when i compute the expected value i did so in three prior recordings when i worked the explanation example one example two <clears throat> in this session i will work it one more time but once we get the sensitivity analysis i expect you to know how to compute the expected value by yourself so i'm going to show you the solution a car dealership must decide how many newly electric luxury cars to stock for the upcoming sales season. So this car dealership, they want to buy this car or they don't know how many to buy. This is a new risky product. The dealership can order none. I want to stay out of this business. I'm not going to touch electric car. I don't deal with it. I'm going to try one or I'm going to try two cars. The demand for cars is uncertain. Of course, everything is uncertain. The demand for any product is uncertain, but the but the dealership has the following estimate for demand now zero cars there's a 20 percent chance no one's gonna buy this car so just don't buy anything no one's buying this car there's 50 percent chance that the car dealer can sell one car and there's obviously a 30 percent chance that the car dealer can sell two cars so those are the original probabilities this is basically what we call the baseline now we can compute the expected value the profit for each car sold is a hundred thousand and if the car is not sold there's a cost of carrying each car and that cost is twenty thousand this could be maybe we finance the transaction maybe we need to pay for maintenance maybe we need to pay for rent that rent this particular equipment to keep the car uh, functioning whatever the reason is we we, ha we have a cost of carrying there's a twenty thousand dollar cost for unsold car because it was not sold we have to transport it back there's twenty thousand now here's the summary if we stock zero cars that's one decision the demand is zero the demand is zero the demand is zero it doesn't matter what the demand is how much can we sell if we sold if we stock zero cars nothing if we stock zero cars profit zero profit zero profit zero because we don't have anything to sell if we stock one car and the demand was zero what's going to happen we have to return that car and because we carried it we carried the car we have a negative notice this is a negative 20,000 let me just put it here negative 20,000 this is the cost because we ordered one and the demand was zero now if we ordered one and the demand was one perfect we can make a profit of a hundred thousand if we order one and the demand was two ugh, I wish we ordered two but the profit would still be a hundred thousand because that's the only car now bear in mind the reason I'm going over this in a little bit in details because I'm going to speed up when I go over the computation if we stock two cars now we're being risky and the demand was zero uh, we have to now pay forty thousand dollars the cost for carrying those cars forty thousand dollars why because we purchased them none of them were sold boom we got hit with forty thousand dollar fee if we bought two cars and one only one was sold so if one is sold that's a hundred thousand dollar in profit 
then the other one will have to be returned and as a result because it's unsold we have it costs us 20 therefore our profit is 80 now if we order two and as expected that 30 percent chance both were sold we have a profit of 200,000 great we book the profit we don't have any cost of carrying this vehicle now we are going to compute the expected value for each of these scenarios again I'm gonna go over the expected value computation slowly for now not slowly just go over it step by step because we already covered this then once it comes to sensitivity analysis we work with the end product so starting with if we stock a zero cars if we stock zero cars it doesn't matter what the demand is we're always gonna make a zero profit because zero times 20 percent plus zero times 50 percent plus zero times 30 percent it doesn't matter is zero okay so this is the expected value is zero if we stock one car and the demand was zero well, we have a loss of 20,000 if we stock one car and the demand was one we have a profit of a hundred thousand if we stock one car and demand was two our profit is also 100,000 we saw this in the prior slide now let's compute the expected value for this vehicle remember the probabilities are 24 0 54 uh, one car and 34 two cars I should have put the probabilities here but you're gonna see them again 20 50 30 uh, again now we have remember the 20,000 is negative if we did not sell it remember this is negative so it's 20% times negative 20 is negative 4,000 and I put it negative 4,000 to kind of and I highlight it in yellow to make sure when you are computing this on the exam day you deduct the loss you deduct the loss from the expected value 50% chance will get the one car for a hundred thousand that's a fifty thousand and thirty percent chance the demand was to be we only have one car thirty percent chance times a hundred thousand is thirty thousand the expected value for one car is 76 obviously more than zero because zero were not taking any risk therefore you don't take any risk you don't get any expected value if we book two cars and none was sold we have a loss of 40 if we book two cars and one of them is sold the profit is 80 I already did this computation if we sold both it's 200,000 here's the expected value 20% times negative 40 is negative 8 50% times 80 40,000 30% times 200 is 60,000 and the expected value for two cars is 92,000 and this is a summary of expected value of all three scenarios 0 76 and 92 now based on the expected value what would you think the dealership would do based on this expected value the dealership would say yeah the highest expected value is what I should go with assuming they are using math now here where the human decision or the risk averse or risk neutral or, or risk seeking individual will play a role it's important to consider that consider that stocking two cars carry the risk of losing 40,000 because remember this could materialize so if the if that dealer is risk averse they might say I'm not taking two cars why because there's a probability there's a high probability risk you could end up with this only zero demand and 40,000 in losses not 8 8,000 that's the probability outcome weighted 40,000 in losses so here we go zero demand 40,000 so a risk averse dealer might say ah, I'm, I'm not getting two cars because the losses are very high if the dealer were more cautious or risk averse they might choose to to stock only one car which provide a solid return with a potential loss of only you know yeah I'm not gonna get the full 100,000 but I'm willing to take my chances so the choice between stock in one or two cars depends on the dealership risk tolerance now we are going to do what we are going to change the scenario a little bit how well guess what you remember th this probability was 20% now we're gonna make a 10 and what we did is we took the 10 and we added to the demand for one car and the probability of two cars was 30 we're gonna take 10 out of it and put it into the one car so what we're doing now we think we think there's a higher probability of what's happening that there's a high probability now I mean what way higher relative to zero and two way relative to zero now we are a little bit more confident that one car will be sold if one car will be sold if we compute the expected value as we did given the same numbers again 
now we choose one car now we are more certain 70 percent chance car and this is what the sensitivity analysis is now we could also change the the profit we could change the profit you know we can change that as well but let's keep things the same just to kind of for things to make sense <clears throat> Notice we, we are giving more probability under this scenario to demand equal to one. Now, why would the dealer make that make that assumption? Just kind of kind of just to kind of think about it. Maybe the dealer took a survey of his current customers and the potential customers. Somehow he he took a, uh, he took a uh, he took a survey, or he studied the market in the area where other electric cars are being sold, and on average, every dealer is selling one of these cars. So now the dealer will have more more confidence to do that so the higher the probability of only needing one reduces the benefit of stock in two as holding access now we're like more likely to go with one because now taken two uh, the chances are 20 percent selling those two and the risk is higher so you're more likely you would go toward stocking one car the third scenario is guess what now we're being a little bit pessimistic here we're going to give the probability of zero 30 percent now why would that happen well uh, there's higher unemployment in the area other dealers are not selling the cars whatever the reason is we're not going to sell there's a there's a more higher chance of selling none and demand for two we took the 10 percent and let's assume we gave it to the demanding one car again under this scenario when we computed now the stock in one car is the safest because now stocking two cars is too risky stocking two cars the expected value is 64 but there's a high expected loss of 40,000 definitely you don't want to take the two cars now under if that's what the dealer is assuming obviously you can see this through the numbers the fourth scenario is <laughs> demand for two cars is 50 percent guess what there's a high demand for this car 50% chance I'm going to sell two cars based on my information. Where did I get this information from? I surveyed the customers. I looked at the industry. Everyone is selling each, every dealership that's buying these cars. At least two of them are being sold. I'm more confident. I put 50% probability. I compute my expected values. 10% chance of selling none, which is low chance. I see that 124,000. Here, what would I do? I'm more likely to go with the two cars most likely go with the two cars because the expected value is 124 and if nothing is sold yes i would lose 40 40 000. but again that's for the dealer uh, uh the dealer's uh, risk tolerance now looking at the at the four options this was the original the baseline or the expected value that we looked at then we changed the scenario a little bit and we saw under scenario two and scenario three a good to stock one car under scenario four when everything's looking good we would want to do what have two luxury cars two luxury cars so scenario four would say go for two luxury cars uh, again here it depends on someone's risk tolerance what they think is going to happen this is why we live in an uncertain uh, uncertain uh, environment that's why we have to do these scenarios and take our best guess what should you do now well because there's uncertainty on your exam go to Farhat lectures look at practice questions about sensitivity analysis expected value practice questions as many as you can to do what to be prepared for your CMA exam CPA exam or any other professional certification accounting finance courses invest in yourself then you will buy that electric vehicle uh, don't buy vehicles I don't I don't care about vehicles invest in yourself